Welcome back. We're going to teach you some more uh, strategies and how to do it. And we're going to talk about something called compost extracts at this point. Now, you know, most of you are familiar with a very simple concept of taking compost and brewing for 24 hours with lots of oxygen and so forth to create a compost tea. Um, why is there arguably more value in an extract? It takes more compost, but why is there more value in an extract versus a tea? Well, if we look at the definition of the word science in Webster's Dictionary, the definition of science is adherence to natural laws and principles. And then we say, okay, we're going to learn from nature. What's the central operating principle of nature? It's very simple. There are no arguments. It's biodiversity. And so what we're seeking when we uh, are utilizing microbial inoculants in the soil is to magnify biodiversity. And the concept of an extract is that you're taking everything that's present in that compost and usually using the sort of forcible extract uh, to wash them off their humus base and you've got the whole picture. You've got the entire, it might be 30,000 different creatures arguably, uh, and billions in total, versus a compost tea. And a compost tea is where you've created ideal oxygen conditions and the organisms that love oxygen go crazy and you might end up with 20 or 30 or 40 or whatever the number of oxygen lovers, which is great because some of them are really good, like Bacillus subtilis and so forth, that can do some good, perform some good tasks in your soil. But if you've got a heavy clay soil and you just bred a whole bunch of oxygen lovers and you put them out in your soil that doesn't breathe particularly well, they say, where the hell is this and what am I supposed to do here in the absence of oxygen? So you've sort of selected for oxygen lovers and you've reduced your biodiversity, even though it has value. So we're going to talk about extracts because they are so important and we're going to talk about arguably the best of all compost extracts because it comes from the best of all composts. And of course, we're talking about vermicompost. We're talking about trial work uh, in Queensland at one point where they compared a whole variety of composts and vermicompost outperformed every other compost in that quite substantial trial. It was 10 times better than the second best compost, which was cow manure based compost. So vermicompost is the bee's knees of compost. So it becomes the very best material we're going to use for an extract. So there are a whole variety of ways that you might choose to do an extract. On my farms, we use a, a, a compost tea bag that's with a bucket where it's stapled onto the top of the bucket and the bu bucket, uh, top of the bucket, and we just rivet on the compost tea bag that drops into a thousand litre container. Uh, and then we use a high pressure hose to blast the, and, and that might take, you know, you know, quite a few minutes to blast everything off that compost that you put into the bag. Well, this is a, a, a something we've developed uh, for a 200 litre extract system. And basically, I'll just plug it in so you can see how it works. Uh, we've got this, the bucket with the compost tea bag that drops right to the bottom of the 200 litre drum. And we're going to feed, and we've got lots of bubbles. We've got four prongs going down into that bucket. I'll show you shortly at the end. We'll pull it out and you can have a look at the apparatus. You can make it yourself. Um, and basically, we're going to wash and, and force the, the microbes off. Now, if you're going to do your homemade system, basically, it's really good to know where the sweet spot is in terms of how long you continue that extraction. And that's where the little tool called a microbiometer can be immensely valuable because some of our growers have found with their particular extraction systems, and they all vary depending on what you set up. It might be a big swirling whirlpool of high pressure water to blast everything off that compost. Uh, but whatever system, or well, you might use air or however, but whatever system is going to vary. And so basically you test with a microbiometer and, and one, of our, one of our larger scale growers at 15 minutes of, of this forcible extraction, uh, at 35 minutes, that was the sweet spot. That was the highest. It was double 15 minutes in terms of the microbial counts. So 35 minutes was the period that worked best for him. And there was no further extraction after 35 minutes. So you got the best of the best at that point. So what we found with this system is that 30 minutes works pretty well. So we'll just show you how we're going to do it. So we're going to take some beautiful vermicompost here. It's wonderful vermicompost by, made by one of the best producers in the country called Worms Down Under in Queensland here. Uh, and we're going to pour some of that uh, into this bag. I'll show you how it works shortly. In fact, we're going to pour all of it into there. And we're going to begin our extraction. And then 30 minutes later, we'll come back and we'll talk about and show you the end product. And we'll show you what we do next, because there's a second step. You don't need to do it, but it can be a value to perform the second step to extend the shelf life of your end brew.
So we've got about 20 kilos, so 10% is the figure. Um, 20 kilos for, so 100 kilos for 1,000 litres, uh, 20 kilos for a, for a 200 litre drum is 10%. And that seems to be, you know, very good counts and, and, and it works within the system to put your 10 kilos in there. And of course, you've got this whole spectrum of, you know, bacterial dominated, uh, but lots of good bacteria, organisms that fix nitrogen, organisms that solubilize phosphate, organisms that digest carbon and turn it into humans, organisms that deliver minerals and organisms that protect from disease. Wonderful consortium of organisms that's present in vermicompost. And, and there's, there's protozoa, there's actinomycetes in quite high numbers, that's why it smells so nice. Of course, they produce the volatile chemicals that give that delicious smell. I'm starting to really pump out some, really pump some tea out from this, this extract out from this. It's actually working very well. This is quite a new setup. And this is actually, I think our pioneer attempt at seeing how well it extracts. And currently it's doing a very, very good job. So you've got the tea bag that's isolating all the, all the fiber and so forth and just pumping out. And I think we're almost as much as we can put in there at the moment. I think that'll do us. Uh, so now we're going to leave that for our 30 minute process. We could demonstrate on the microbiometer, but we've shown you before how that works and show you that that's where you've got your highest count. And then we'll come back to show you a second step that's not essential, but a wonderful idea if you want to extend the shelf life of your vermicast extract. Welcome back. So we've finished our extract and now I'll show you the equipment so you've got some idea of what's involved. And as we mentioned, there are many ways you can do this, just a high pressure hose in a compost tea bag. But we'll show you our particular, what looks like quite, an, quite a successful extract here. And we'll remove this so that you can have a little bit of a closer look. This is the um, apparatus. You can see here, lots of little holes running the full length, uh, four prongs that go into the bucket, the bucket attached to the compost tea bag. Uh, and that's what we're blowing, basically forcefully extracting the microbes off their humus home base and the, and the vermicast. So that's the start. We'll put this down here for a minute and then we'll um, pull out the bucket and I'll get Carl to help me here because it can be quite heavy as we extract this. So you can see that's the compost tea bag. You can buy these from NTS and we've just uh, attached it to the top of a bucket that we've cut off that becomes the... Uh, it's quite heavy when the time, by the time you pull it all out. And what we're left here is this beautiful um, dark colored extract. And that can be the end of it. You can put that out as soon as possible. You can put that out tomorrow. Um, but if you want to produce something with a much longer shelf life, even up to a year's shelf life, there's another little trick that we'll teach you. And that little trick involves gradually starving. So we, so we could at this point, if we chose activate the Brewstar 200, if we were wanting to brew conventionally, but we don't want that much oxygen. What we want to do is have a much smaller flow of oxygen and just a little bit of food. I'll just show you. So we're going to use this simple little aquarium pump with a couple of air stones. So air stones, of course, are just this porous cylinders that send out thousands of tiny little bubbles, but we don't want, now this would be usually a 20 liter bucket type operation, we want to just sort of maintain some oxygen, maybe four or five parts per million, which is not optimum because normally we want at least six parts per million. And what we're doing is kind of starving them of oxygen. So they go back into, you know, you're creating greater longevity. They form spores and so forth. And you've got a worm extract that will last for months if you leave it for perhaps two days uh, with a tiny bit of food. So you're taking them over and just sort of suboptimal oxygen levels. And we're doing that with a little fish tank. So we're going to drop that in here. And we can see all of our little bubbles. It's, you know, it's not sufficient to brew a 200 litre drum, but it's enough to just keep a little bit of oxygen ticking over in the water. And then we're going to add, uh, we find this combination. We use a little bit of our three in one kelp mix. Very good kelp mix. It's a synergy between three kelp species. We actually guarantee it'll be the best kelp you've used well, you get your money back and we've never had to give the money back. It is tremendous. It's called tri-kelp. Just, just 150, 200 grams, just a little bit, enough to tick them over and keep this little bit of food there. A little bit of fulvic acid because there's a lot of bacteria 
in a worm soup and bacteria love fulvic acid. So we're going to tick a little bit of this in there. Of course, kelp's got all the trace minerals as well. And finally, some amino acids, just that little touch of protein building amino acids, um, 200 mils that we're going to put into this mix. And that's not a lot, you know, that's the total of, uh, you know, half a percent or whatever. And that's the kind of figure that we're looking at. Uh, and so now we've got our gently bubbling brew uh, that we are now bubbled for at least a couple of days and basically starving them slightly of, of, of oxygen and creating this longevity in our worm extract. Thank you.